Welcome to another exclusive studio preview here on Autogefühl with the new Audi Q5 facelift. All the details, an exterior and interior, and also what can we expect from engine changes. As you know, everything in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The front of the new Audi Q5 facelift starts stronger now, so the whole grille is wider and also more aggressive in the look, already for the base versions. Then this is the optional S-line, the sporty design, and this then comes with the honeycomb style, so the base grille has a little bit different inside style. And the base S-line would also have a bright look here, so this is S-line plus the optional shadow line package and then you also have the high gloss black accentuations here and the most menacing look for this vehicle. The S-Line also has stronger elements here. They are not really air intakes, you could say fake air intakes elements. And again, when you have the shadow line, then you also have the high gloss black in the lower area. These are, by the way, RS models inspired. They look somewhat you know, similar, for example, in the Audi RS Q8 but then also serve a function. Then the headlamps, they start with LED now from base. Optionally, you can get these, the matrix LED. They also have a wider LED daytime running light signature. So these are then additional, for example, and the whole headlamp unit has also changed the form a little bit already when you pick the base LED. And when you have these optional LED, let's say the extended LED option, you also have the cascading turning indicators. The length is now at 4 meters 68, 15 foot 4 or 184 inches, just a little bit longer due to other bumper overhang. Yeah, interesting. From which side will I enter the stage? Today it's this one. <laughs> so the side profile has not been touched majorly. You can see it still has this interesting design line above the door handle, which is a little bit, let's say, curved here, a little swing in there towards the rear. And this again being the exterior S-Line package, usually wheels start from 17 inch, S-Line automatically comes from 18 inch, before it was 19 inch, so indeed the S-Line entry alloy is a little bit smaller now, hmm. but then it goes all the way up and this is the optional 21 inch wheel for a Q5, really, really massive. This color by the way is called District Green, Looks like an army green or so, doesn't it? New in the side profile is this lower bumper. It will either be in a normal plain black with a base. Then in the S-Line it would be silver. And here S-Line plus this shadow package makes it yeah, high gloss black or high gloss gray, so to say. Together with the shadow line here also then with the black window frames. Would you pick it like this? So you can think about it, base again, plain black, S-line, make it bright, chrome style alike, silver accentuations, or then S-line, shadow line, you are black again, but then everything high gloss black, which would be your choice. The main new highlight is OLED organic LED, and you can see here, look at the lights. And now I'm, I'm a car, for example, or I'm a person, well, and then you can see, have you seen that? the signature in the rear changes. So that means now the car, and it's a new trend that will be continued, that cars communicate with the outside world over the lights. And this is more like an approaching lights. Nice like, oh, you're coming closer to me, you know? That's a very interesting technology piece. And when you take a look at these OLEDs in a closer way, the light area itself, so the light itself is one-to-one -one with the light area and they look so flat like a canvas, so very interesting new technology. They are an option and both. You can go with the base LED lamps and then add the OLED or can go with the matrix LED lamps and then add the OLED. So it's separately, you know, can decide on your own for what you want to spend the extra money, but definitely very interesting technology piece here. 
when we activate, by the way, the dynamic mode in the, uh, you know, in, in the front cockpit, then once again the lightning signature is changing to a more, let's say, aggressive look. And furthermore, you as a customer can pick three different base layouts how your car is supposed to look here from the base signature and also when you have the welcome uh, or you know goodbye light when you open or close the vehicle and later on for newer models and so on they also think about that you can change it later on in the infotainment system so more to come there we always keep you updated with these technology changes other than that you have the new strip that goes all the way of the vehicle here in the S-Line shadow line package. It's in black then again in this case. And the lower part with the S-Line has this massive fake exhaust. So the fake exhaust police on Autogo Fuel is active. And it's a very special fake exhaust episode because, I mean, for fake exhaust, they really look very cool. And I mean, they also took criticism and want to change something. So. When you look inside, the area is not plain, that it looks like very cheap. They made an angle inside the fake exhaust that it looks more real and it looks like it doesn't have like a direct ending, not a plain ending, but goes deeper inside. So, <laughs> fine tuning the fake exhaust. I also talked to the Audi officials and they said they have internal discussion going on. Some say just leave them completely, some like fake exhaust. Yeah, I think it's an ongoing discussion, definitely. But tell me, what do you think of these new evolved fake exhausts? And suspension information, you start with a fixed base suspension, optional uh, fixed sport suspension. Then the third option, you have the adaptive suspension, normal but adaptive. And the fourth option is the adaptive air suspension, also equipped with this very vehicle. It was quite rare on the market, meanwhile, some other competitors have caught up there, but definitely the most comfortable option then when you go for the air suspension and also most off-road capable at the same time because you can <laughs> pump it up your all. By the way, here, this again, the sports signature here when you are in the dynamic mode. And in this case, then when you approach the vehicle, the difference between the normal um, appearance and here the approaching appearance is a little bit bigger than this, this contrast. You can see it right here. The scheme of this facelift, as for the engines, is electrification. Almost all engines are now mild hybrid. On the petrol side, we can also see it right here. This is the two-liter four-cylinder turbo petrol engine. Comes with a 12-volt bolt nut and a smaller lithium-iron battery for the mild hybrid system. Then in the US still, or North American market, we still have the three-liter six-cylinder petrol engine in the SQ5. This one does not get mild hybrid. And then switch over to the diesel, also two liter four cylinder TDI or the three liter six cylinder TDI. And the latter one also gets the MF system. In this case then with a 48 volt board net and the bigger lithium ion batteries. So it will be the, let's say, most electrified pure combustion engine. And then there's also the plug-in hybrids this then for the 2 liter TFSI in combination with an electric motor in two different horsepower specs. And figures here the 2 liter TFSI 204 or 265 horsepower Quattro Ultra all-wheel drive front plus rear together with S-Tronic dual clutch transmission. Then the 3 liter TFSI in the SQ5 not available in the EU 354 horsepower all-wheel drive standard all-wheel drive quattro so 4060 base distribution front rear with the converter automatic gearbox yeah that's the more classic thing and probably most people want with it rear wheel biased so rear wheel biased all-wheel drive of course then the plug-in hybrids 300 or 367 horsepower and both get the bigger battery now then the diesel side a 2 liter ddi with 136 163 or 204 horsepower. The latter one also with all-wheel drive. The small diesels get front-wheel drive only. When it's all-wheel drive, also the Quattro Ultra front plus rear on demand. And last but not least, the three liter V6 TDI that can either be have with 286 horsepower or the SQ5 diesel 341 horsepower. And both with the classic Quattro all-wheel drive 
4060 front rear distribution and converter automatic gearbox, the SQ5 still with 700 Newton meters of torque. I really like the key that comes with the A5 or Q5 models. Very slim and yeah, high class, but you can also use the keyless entry, of course. And interesting that here the door handles, they go up a little bit, so it's a unique feature also. But same with the A5. Door closing sound, very solid, nice. Instant of the doors. This is not the S-Line interior here. You can also have an S-Line interior, by the way. This is new. Real wood decor, new elements, matte also, so feels very good, this is nice. And interesting here, the instant of the door. So this is pretty hard, but not super hard pack. You can, you know, squeeze it in just a little bit and the initial vehicles were pure hard pack. And then the SQ5 was changed first and now all models received a little bit softer elements. So this is an upgrade for the interior. The question is, why isn't it very soft in the top part and very hard pack in the rear part? That's, you know, usual a thing. The reason is you can see here, it is one piece. And so they needed a material that works for the lower and for the upper part. Because for the lower part, a soft material does not work that well because, you know, of scratches and so on. Um, so also more cost savings when you, and less complexity when you have it just as one piece. So, better than before, of course, in some way you could still argue that it would be cool if it would be softer in the top part. Leave that to your discussion. Big door pockets, like for a mid-size SUV. Optional Bang & Olufsen system, that will give you a nice sound. And indeed, this S-Line entry badge here is for the exterior, it's connected to the exterior. Usually we see these when you have S-Line interior, but here it's not the case. Then the steering wheel still looks pretty modern here. Mirrors the grille on the inside. Here's also again the matte wood element. Dashboard is soft touch, virtual cockpit, optional head-up display, a real one. As for the seats, there are two basic seat forms. The base seat is available in all fabric in Europe. That's also the preferable one. In the US, for example, it already starts with a mix of animal skin and the leatherette. And then this optional sports seat here with a little bit more bolstering. In this case, also with animal skin and some leatherette on the outside. So it's a mix here. It's also available with an Alcantara, in this case, Dynamica share. So it's a microfiber material. They just changed the supplier from the company of Alcantara to Dynamica now like Mercedes, for example, are using also. Interesting. So that means, whereas in the compact vehicles, Audi made a lot of progress of reducing animal skin material, it's not here yet. So they still have to work on that. Would have expected that with the face effect, actually. However, from the seat form, the seating position here is very good. You can put the lower part a little bit longer like this, and you already have the feeling of sitting in a grown-up SUV. Have the seat all the way down, with one minute is 86 or six foot one. Still have some headroom left here, although this one is built with the panoramic roof. You do not have to go for that one. When I think about when we drove the initial car in Baja California in Mexico, that was so hot that you probably would be better off without the panoramic roof, even though there is a shade available you can close. Steering wheel is in this case, it starts with a manual control, but can also be controlled electrically, like this, in and out and up and down, also a little bit further. So you can find a very good, nice and comfortable seating position. The steering wheel also has a good size and a good grip and so on. Shifting pedals here were for the automatic. You can shift down or, or up yourself. So it's a nice open atmosphere. And especially here with the new screen, more details to that now. Interior overview, obviously the biggest change is this new screen. It always comes like this, 10.1 inch, is also standard. The trick is basically that you do not have to get every feature instantaneously. 
they also can be upgraded later on. That's a new thing. Um, it is good, for example, for later car owners, if they buy a used car and then there's some feature missing, they can still buy it later on. Um, yeah, that would be something now also with monthly cards, uh, map air, data updates and so on. So this is also one change. Here you can see the drive select. Soon we'll get into the details of the screen. It looks a little bit attached because it wasn't planned before. Yet again, because it is so attached, it's also close towards you. And that means you can very easily access it also then when driving. Of course, you shouldn't play around with that too much while driving, but it is really easy to reach. Therefore, then it's also somewhat okay that the MMI knob in the lower part is missing now. So that's the thing. They saved that then because they went all the way touch. Yeah, people are mixed opinion about that. Tell me yours in the comment about this. But two cool things here. Here are the matte wood insert also right there. And thanks to the automotive guard, they kept the classic climate unit. So no like touch screen for that. And wow, this is still one of my favorite climate units overall of all time. Has a nice clicking sound. Just such a great haptical feeling. It's so simple to use. And then the upgraded one also has these touch bars here. That's like semi touch bars, so to say, because this is then still a real knob. Seat heating, seat cooling also in this case. The drive slack also still has a real button. And then it also changes if you have the air suspension, also the niveau of the vehicle, depending on the driving mode, for example. In the lower part, start, stop, engine button. You have some space for your smartphone here, but limited one, so to say, USB-A device. Then there's a new small cubby hole right here in the front, but not that useful. Still a manual volume knob here, rather for the co-driver, like, hey, Thomas, you have the music too loud again. I'll tune it down. Yeah, about that. <laughs> then you have the automatic gear lever. Well, I can always turn up the music again at the shear wheel, right? Not that it will happen. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Here the electric handbrake, and then this new area here also with the matte wood insert, but there are of course other designs available. Then here with the leather cover for the armrest, and when we put that up, we have USB-C charger now, and what's also interesting, we can slide this, you know, just for the inductive charging, we can slide this backwards, and then the cup holders too, and here on the right side you can see there's a different insert, and this is also available for cooling and heating. Now to the screen in detail, here's the Android Auto connection this time, just as a showcase how that one looks like, you can also check out how the Google Maps looks like this. Apple CarPlay, of course, also available. Apple CarPlay, also wireless, by the way. Then you can go to the normal MMI menu. It looks like this. Either, you know, it's actually a good overview. However, this one is new, so you can have a more individualized menu right here, sort of what you see directly. I mean, yeah, why not? Also here, purchases, you can, for example, see here, GPS and the Audi smartphone interface was purchased. So you can do that with the with the app or also with the desktop, with the online connection then um, when you have your Audi account. Soon it should also be possible to have an in-car shop. They're developing that. Pretty interesting, but you have the base hardware. That's at least good that you always have the same hardware. Then the GPS from the car itself looks like this. We're in the Audi headquarters here, right here, is the, the main head, head plans, it's on the area. Looks quite good and it's also quite responsive. And we can have the vehicle functionality right here, for example, the drive select. Once more, when you have the air suspension, then it also raises or goes down. Overall, I think a pretty easy system, you can learn it very well. Now the virtual cockpit with a very clear display it's pretty cool you can change the view for example to the full map view or back and have these classic simulated round gauges you can use your left thumb at the steering wheel to zoom in and out for example and you can also have other 
you know, stuff here, for example, or a range and driving assistant and so on. And interesting also is a new function. You can have this um, dynamic view. You change it in the options in the central MMI display, not on left side, but on the central side. I've done it now. And then you can see you have this view, then a more, let's say, digital view, I would call it that way. And then it looks like this when you switch the map. Optional head-up display with the current speed. It will also show then traffic sign recognition. And when you have a root set like here, you will also have the arrow display to know where you're going next. And here you can see the nice ambient lighting right here. We can also change the color tone of that. I would of course always go with Thomas Blue. Rear inside doors with this beautiful wood insert as well. And the material front and rear is also the same. So again, it is rather hard packed, but not entirely hard. Like a little bit, you can squeeze it inside. And again, the reason, once again, because it's one piece here. Also pretty interesting. I think, you know, I'm actually okay with that if it's now like this. Not with the initial cast, but now I think it's okay. Then you can take a look. It's some kind of a single seat setup. The middle part is a little bit higher. Not sure how often the middle fifth seat is being used. And this is also the optional seating bench. You can also move front and back and also change the angle and so on. Let's test that. So when I get inside, as for the leg room, again, mid-set SUV segment, and it's not too bad actually. So um, there are also these gaps here in the seat or like recess and still a lot of leg room. The seat is to my driving position. So quite comfortable. Also upright seating position here in the rear. Headroom still works. I can put a hand over my head. Will be more a little bit more when we leave out the panoramic roof. Yet again, especially for the rear passengers, it's really cool to look outside there. I can also put the head restraint up and lean myself backward. Um, yeah, that still works then with four tall adults. Five, well, that's the question. Being in the middle part here, you know, it's actually quite okay and works because then I also <laughs> in the cap of the panoramic roof. You can also drive it with five adults, but of course, the outward seats are more comfortable. They feature isofix for the child seats. And then we have this cup holder here. Sides, also adaptive. That's nicely done. Here's also a ski hatch right there from here. And you can already flip the seats from here and that is done with the lever down there. So in this lever also, changes the angle so it flips completely but you can also do it like this or push it more further back then you have a more lying seating position so you can also adjust the angle right there so that's actually quite cool yeah probably like this or then sit more upright like this and you can move this bench then forward or backward it's an option like this reduce the leg room but increase the trunk space depending on the people sitting here or if there's no one sitting here or then here for the maximum leg room, what I probably would do. Last but not least, we have two USB-A chargers here and if you want also a rear climate unit. Here, by the way, the cascading turning indicator from the rear, also pretty interesting when opening or closing the vehicle. So, four ways to open the hatch. Press twice here at the key, use the manual button right here under the rings open it from the inside of the driver's door. And the fourth way is using the foot kick opening mechanism. And there's sometimes the show effect that it doesn't work for the fir fir first time because every car is a little bit different. Yeah, there we go. So here the foot kick opening mechanism. And then here we go. And it's actually quite good dimensions overall. We can open it right here, this cover, then as this net, you can also remove it underneath here. So at the moment, some sound equipment. And then we can also flip the seats right here. One third, two third split. It needs some more push to be, you know, finally fixed. And we can first give you some measurements like this here. This is almost a meter in length. And we have a little bit more than a meter in width. That's quite cool. The height to the cover here is about 50 centimeters. That's actually very decent. And the top height is all, yeah, at about 80 centimeters. 550 liters is this here below that. And 1,550 liters is when you have everything flipped like this. 
then it needs one more push, either for example with your luggage or from here like this, and then they're also fixed in this position. And next to the loading sill of about 70 centimeters, you can also put it a little bit more down when you have the air suspension, like here. Then there's a two meter stick, almost works, so one meter is 80 in the total length. And now to our conclusion for today with the new Audi Q5 facelift. Well, exterior wise, it has a sharper look, a sportier look already from the base versions. Of course, then even sportier here in the S line. Interior, the biggest change is, of course, with the infotainment system, now with a touchscreen. So it is easier to use on the one hand. While driving, you could argue that the MMI knob was somewhat practical. However, it is a very good system software wise. So you can also somewhat, for a touchscreen, very well control it while driving. Overall, I still think it is an upgrade. The virtual cockpit is still among the best ones and also offers more functionality now. They also increased the build quality on the interior from one of the earlier models, so we noticed that as well. Overall, the package is still quite nice. This mid-size SUV, it serves a lot of different purposes. What is still missing are the non-animal seating choices in the higher trims and outside of the EU. As I said, you can get base fabric seats at least for the European customers. New with the engines, the mild hybrid technology, so the electrification is the main topic there. And it's also a good move for a little bit more fuel economy. We also very, very soon test that one on the road and maybe also a little bit off-road. Well, this is of course primarily for the road use, but if you also want to take a look at off-roading the Q5, at the initial launch of this vehicle, we did do that. It was a very impressive review as well with the beautiful landscape. We will also link that episode. We also have an SQ5 episode and we will also renew these reviews when the updated engines are coming. So stick here with us and also tune into some reviews of the competitors. They will all be linked in the video description and also in the pinned comments. So overall this face lift, it's not a huge change, but definitely some refinement here and there. And also, last but not least, interesting with this OLED technology, because these changes are also leading changes for other vehicles to come. And especially I found this aspect interesting that it communicates with the outside world a little bit by the light signature. What do you think about that in general, about the Q5 facelift? Tell us in the comments and see you at one of our other videos. Bye for today.